I still have a boom arm here. The little MG still acts in the center of mass. The big MG still acts a quarter of the way over. But there's no tension now. So the wall may be exerting a force. If it's exerting any force at all, it would be in the, could be in the up direction because it can't be left or right. But we don't actually need it for this problem because the fact that it doesn't supply any torque at all. So we're going to leave it off even though it's probably supplying a force and we're going to analyze the torques. So when I think about the torques on this now, let's write a net torque statement. So the net torque on my boom arm is this big MG is supplying a torque and it's supplying at a distance of L over 4 times big MG and the little mg is supplying a torque at a distance of L over 2, little mg. Now there's no other torques. So because there was other torque before, we had to be very careful with the positives and negatives. But here, I'm just going to let these both be positive because there's nothing in the other direction. So whether we call it positive or negative, it doesn't matter. In this case, Newton's second law, very similar to I know, according to Newton's second law, that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The net torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. So those are Newton's second law statements that we know to be true. So let's apply that here. I have I alpha. So since these are both equal to net torque, I'm going to set them equal to each other and go from there. So I end up with I alpha is equal to L over 4 big MG plus L over 2 little mg. Now this means to me that <clears throat> if I want to solve for the acceleration, the actual acceleration isn't anywhere in here. And I want to know what the instantaneous acceleration is for this piece right here. I want to know what is the linear acceleration, the instantaneous linear acceleration at the moment that the whole thing is let go. So because I don't see acceleration anywhere in here, I'm obviously going to have to make some substitutions. When I look at the left side, I don't know the moment of inertia, nor do I have a statement for the angular acceleration. But there are some things I know. For example, for a rod pivoted at the end here, the moment of inertia for a rod pivoted at one end is equal to one-third ml squared, where m is the mass of the rod and l is the total length of the rod. Another thing I know in a relationship between linear and angular acceleration is that if you want to calculate the linear acceleration of an object that's rotating, you have to know the angular acceleration and the radius. Therefore, the angular acceleration could be solved for by taking the linear acceleration over a, or a over r. And so now, if I take these two statements and I substitute them in here, we may be able to work this out. So let's try. So I have I alpha. So my I value is equal to one third m l squared. Now my alpha value is A over R. And in this case, the R is the distance from the pivot point to the point I'm looking for. So that actually turns out to be the full length. That's the left side. The right side is still the same. L over 4 big MG plus L over 2 little mg. One thing to notice right away is that L over 2 divided by L is an L on this side and each of these terms also has an L. So again the L's magically disappear which is nice. So if I simplify I end up with one third little m a is equal to big MG over 4 plus little mg over 2. This actually seems pretty good because I have little m and big M and the g value is a gravitational field strength. That's 10 newtons per kilogram. So I should actually be able to solve pretty easily here. So let's plug and chug here and then we'll divide. It might be easier. So 1 third, the little mass is 4 times the acceleration is equal to big mass is 10 Gravitational field strength is 10, all over 4, plus mass is 4. Gravitational field strength is 10, all over 2.
10 times 10 is 100 divided by 4 is 25. Plus 4 times 10 is 40 divided by 2 is 20. And this is divided by 3 over 4. And when I solve for that, the acceleration is equal to 33.75 meters per second per second.